Hi everyone, I'm Sister Mary Elizabeth, the Sister of the World Community, and I would like to welcome all of you that are joining us this Thursday, October 15th, to do like to divine and to pray with sacred scripture. Today is the Memorial Day of Saint Teresa of Avila. Teresa was born in Avila, Spain on March 28, 1515, and died in 1582. Of the many women who have exercised leadership roles in the church, Teresa must surely be considered among the greatest. When she entered the Carmelite convent, some thought Teresa was a spoiled young woman with an unremarkable prayer life, but she soon advanced in prayer, experiencing visions and hearing voices. Dissatisfied with the laxity she perceived among religious, she determined to institute reforms and establish St. Joseph's convent where enclosure and strict rules prevailed. With the assistance of Peter of Alcantara and John of the Cross, Teresa succeeded in founding the reformed discalced Carmelite orders of nuns and friars. Teresa wrote several works considered classics of spiritual literature, including The Way of Perfection and The Interior Castle. A great mystic and a strong, intelligent and active leader, Teresa was canonized in 1622 and in 1970 became the first woman to be declared a doctor of the church. She's the patron saint of Spain. So today a feast day of a great saint and the saint that was a Carmelite. So we are invited today to pray for the Carmelite nuns and friars and also for the third order Carmelites that we know that some of our friends, some we only heard about, but they belong to our church and we are invited to pray for them today. Also today, the liturgy gives us the beginning of the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. So today we will start this new letter of St. Paul, St. Paul to the Ephesians. And a little bit of introduction on the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians is, it is dated in about 60 or 62 AD. And this letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians have different themes, but one of the specific themes, themes that we see in this letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians is the role of the church in God's plan of salvation, the mystery of Christ in the mystery of the church, whose members have become children of God, the mystical body of Christ, the bride of Christ, and the temple of the Holy Spirit. So these are a little bit of the themes that we see in this letter. So let us start to read St. Paul to the Ephesians. Today will be chapter 1, verses 1 to 10. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, and to the saints who are also faithful in Christ Jesus, grace to you and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as He chose us in Him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before Him. He destined us in love to be His sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of His will to the praise of His glorious grace, which He freely bestowed on us in the Beloved. In Him we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of His grace, which He lavished upon us. For He has made known to us in all wisdom and insight the mystery of His will, according to His purpose, which He set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time, to unite all things in Him, things in heaven, and things on earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We see here, first, the salutation of Paul to the Ephesians, but in this letter, he does not mention the Ephesians like he does in the other letters, to the Galatians, to the Romans, to, to Corinth. He doesn't say so there are some scholars that really believe that St. Paul wrote this letter not to the Ephesians, but to a really broad church, 
to many churches in Smyrna and Laodicea and other places. But then with time, the sacred author, sacred scripture gave the name of Ephesians, gave a specific community to this letter of St. Paul. But here we don't see him addressing or greeting a specific a specific community. So probably this letter was around went widely among the Christian communities and not only to the Ephesians. But Paul greets the community here, but then he he expressed spiritual blessings in Christ. He says, Blessed be the God and our Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing. So he's telling us that we are blessed. God blessed us in Christ Jesus and we that have Christ Jesus as our Lord and our Savior, we are blessed. So it's an important thing for us to meditate, saying, I am blessed. I have received every blessing from heaven. Which blessing? To have a Savior. To have Jesus Christ as your, as your Savior. Because in the foundation of the world, God chose us. And He wants us to be this blameless people, this people according to His will. We are called to live according the will of God. And not only deny our own will to live by the will of God, but to make the will of God our will, to, to make the will of God our desire. Because Christ was made to unite all things, things in heaven and things on earth. We are invited to live this unity of heaven and earth. We don't live one life here on earth and then in heaven will be another life. We'll be a different life because we'll be in heaven contemplating the face of God the Father. But it's the same life. It's you. It's me. The same thing. We'll, the way that we live here with our hearts full of love to the Lord will be the same heart. That's why we need to learn how to love God here on earth because the love that we live, the love that we love God here on earth, will be the same love that we will love Him in heaven. Sure, in a very complete way, in a full way, but that doesn't mean we'll be with a different love. We need to learn how to love God here, how to give Him thanks here, how to recognize to recognize how we are blessed here on earth, and then in heaven. We be, will be only the completion, the plenitude. We will live fully what we live here on earth. And Jesus has made known to us all the wisdom and mystery of the will of God. Wisdom and mystery of the will of God. Many times we think that the will of God is unknown to us. I don't know what is the will of God in my life. I don't know what's, what it is, the will of God in this and that situation, but Jesus made it known to us. It means that if we get closer to Jesus, closer to His heart, reading, praying with sacred scripture, being close to His heart, to the sacraments in the church, we will know what is the will of God. We will recognize the will of God and we will see that we don't live the will of God many times because we are living by our own will. But we are invited to live by the will of God. The responsorial psalm for today is Psalm 98. Psalm 98 verses 1 to 6. And Psalm 96, 98 says, I sing to the Lord a new song, for He has done marvelous things. His right hand and His holy arm have gotten Him victory. The Lord has made known His victory. He has revealed His vindication in the sight of the nations. He has remembered His mercy and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. Sing praises to the Lord with the lyre with the lyre and the sound of the melody, with trumpets and the sound of the horn, 
make a joyful noise, noise before the king, the Lord. Sing a new song to the Lord, for he has done marvelous things. The psalm is also inviting us to give thanks to the Lord, to praise him, as the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians said. To give thanks to the Lord for all the blessings and the graces that we receive from his hands. The gospel for today is the continuation of the gospel of St. Luke. So today is the last verses of the 11th chapter. So Luke chapter 11 verses 47 to 54. And it is a continuation of the gospel from yesterday. Yesterday we heard Jesus rebuking, denouncing the Pharisees and the lawyers. And today the Lord continues with the continuation of this gospel, denouncing the hypocrisy of the Pharisees and the lawyers, saying, Woe to you, Pharisees! Woe to you, lawyers! And we continue from where we left yesterday. Verse 48. Seven. Woe to you, lawyers, for you build the tombs of the prophets whom your father killed. So you are witnesses and consent the deeds of your father, fathers, for they killed them and you build their tombs. Therefore also the wisdom of God said, I will send them prophets and apostles, some of whom they will kill and persecute, that the blood of all the prophets shed from the foundation of the world may be required of this generation from the blood of Abel to the blood of Zechariah, who perished between the altar and the sanctuary. Yes, I tell you, it shall be required of this generation. Woe to you, lawyers, for you have taken away the key of knowledge. You did not enter yourselves, and you hindered those who were entering. As he went away from there, the scribes and the Pharisees began to press him hard and to provoke him to speak of many things, lying and waiting for him to catch him in something he might say. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus, again, he's denouncing, saying what is wrong in the activity, in this the speeches in the life of the Pharisees, scribes, and lawyers. And especially on verse 52, he says to the lawyers, You have taken away the key of knowledge. You have taken away the key of knowledge. What does that mean? So the lawyers, they were the ones who were supposed to interpret sacred scripture and to tell it to the people in a simple way. They were the ones that, that had access, free access, to the Word of God, to the Old Testament. And they were the ones who were to read it and to give it to the people in a simple way. But they were not doing it. They were making things harder for pe people to understand sacred scripture. Making hard for people to really come close to the Lord through sacred scripture. And that's why the Lord is saying, Woe to you, lawyers. And the Lord can say the same thing to all the leaders of the church. And not only all the leaders, but everyone who have discharge of making the word of the Lord available to people. We are called not to make it difficult, but to make it simple for people to listen, to understand, to love God through His word. And they took the key of knowledge. And interesting that the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians today says that Jesus made known to us all wisdom and insight the mystery of the will of the Father. Jesus made known to us all the wisdom of the Father. And the Pharisees, scribes, and lawyers, they, they took away the key of knowledge and Jesus said you did not enter and did not help others to, en to enter the kingdom of heaven either you hinder those who were entering so you did not enter yourselves and you hinder those who were entering so you didn't make your life holy by doing this 
and you didn't have others to be holier, to love God the Father, to enter the kingdom of God. And Jesus made the word of God, the wisdom of God, simple to our ears, simple to our lives. And that will what we are asked for. We are asked to make the word of God simple to everyone, to everyone, to our children, to our families, to our students, to the people that we love, in our churches, in our groups. We are called to receive this key of knowledge from the Holy Spirit and to help others to understand the word of the Lord too. Like St. Teresa of Avila, she received inspirations from the Lord and she passed her. She gave all the wisdom that she received through her, through her writings. So she, she taught her daughters, her sisters in the convent. But she also helped the whole church to understand the wisdom of God, the knowledge of God. She didn't keep things for herself. And that's what we are asked for. And the humble heart is the only heart that is able to do this. Humility helps us to receive and to give the wisdom of God. Once more, the Lord is calling us to be humble, to be simple, to give what we received, to give back to people what we received. Only the humble of heart, those who thirst for God and acknowledge His word as true, can early understand the wisdom which comes from above. Because Jesus made us able to receive the wisdom of God, to understand the wisdom of God. Not our wisdom, not the wisdom of the world, but the wisdom of God. And today in this Lexi Divina, I invite you to meditate upon this and to, to find where you need to grow in wisdom and the knowledge of God. But to grow in wisdom, we need to grow in relationship, to be closer and closer and closer and closer to our God and Father and to Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ gives us the key of knowledge and understanding. He gave us the Holy Spirit that He told us that the Holy Spirit was going to tell us everything that we were supposed to know, that the Lord wants us to know. So we are called to be closer to the Lord and to receive His Holy Spirit. So today, I would like to leave you with, with a prayer. Lord Jesus, may your word take root in my heart and transform all my thoughts and actions. Give me wisdom and understanding that I may know your will for my life and have the courage to live, in, to live according to it. May the Lord bless us and give us his wisdom and knowledge and his Holy Spirit that will help us to know and to understand the will and the, purp the purpose of the will of God in our lives. Amen.